For lesson eight, we're going to talk a little bit about this part, the SolidWorks uh, connection to the platform, and then we're, the, we'll pop over to Domia and we'll show how we can use these different coordinate systems to place the part. Uh, so <clears throat> as we get started here today, what we're going to do first is we're just going to talk a little bit about this part. In lesson seven, we talked about the auto import of coordinate systems. So if I had these on, I could directly import them into Delmia using the method that we've used up to this point. However, if I'm using the connector or 3D Experience SolidWorks, there are some extra capabilities I can get by using those tools to do the conversion to uh, the 3D Experience platform for me. One of the big ones that comes into play are sketches. If I have an unconsumed sketch here, so one that doesn't exist in a feature, so generally for manufacturing, you know, we create sketches and geometry and things like that that come into play uh, that we use for uh, special programming or we may use it for remnants. Those things, if they're here in the tree and they're unconsumed, I can convert them to the platform and those sketches will then show up in the, in the CAD file or the CAD object for me to actually use inside of Dalmia for programming. So the more connected we are with our CAD system to the platform, the more capabilities we're going to get, which makes it uh, more streamlined for us to program the parts. Now, one thing that is that we should talk about is in the tools area for the connector or in 3D Experience SolidWorks, there are some tool settings. Um, there's this thing called derived formats. And what this will do is whenever you convert a SOLIDWORKS file to the platform, you can have it automatically create a copy, which is what we generally work with in manufacturing anyway. But we can also create PDFs and step files and, and those types of things. Beyond that, I can have I can specify which configurations uh, get converted as well. So if I had a part with multiple configurations, but I always create one called manufacturing. I can say, hey, only convert the ones that are manufacturing as a copy for me to use. So I'm not copying a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just copying what I need to be able to use, use it downstream. So in the settings, you can set this up depending upon your workflow. But the cool thing is, is when we work in manufacturing, we're actually working with a synced copy to the original engineer's file without actually having to create that copy. Uh, a lot of times in downstream manufacturing, you'll see companies take the engineering CAD file, whatever format that's in, and then they save it as a parasolid step by just uh, some neutral format that then, in, then manufacturing works on. And if there's a design change or revision, then that whole process goes over again. And then there's all this extra data that just floats around and nothing synced together. Uh, with using SOLIDWORKS and 3D Experience Platform, I can have it automatically manage those links so I don't have to worry about it. All I have to do is just create the file the way that I need to create the file and let the system take care of the rest. So in this instance, I'll just walk you through a real quick process. Uh, we have one sketch here just, just because <laughs> um, for an example for training and then we have a couple coordinate systems. So to save this to the platform, um, I can just right click and hit save or save with options. I'm going to pick save with options just because um, I do want to show you that there are different settings here. This, I can also run revisions. I can save to an, a specific bookmark um, and then I can put comments like, you know, ready for manufacturing. Um, just like you would in, you know, any PDM system. Now, if I wanted to bump this to a new revision, I can click here and then it, that'll kick off the, you know, creating a, a copy that is a, that is a configuration or a revision, I mean. So we'll go to, if I wanted to go one step further, I could go to my bookmarks and I could place this in a specific bookmark. Um, think of this like uh, a tag, if you will. Um, so in the bookmarks, I can set up uh, different ones that uh, make it easy for me to reference. So I have one for parts to be programmed. So if I wanted to put that in parts to be programmed, I could click here. And once I open it, I can say apply to all and it'll put all those files in there. So then I can go ahead and just search in my bookmark part to be programmed and find this file. So it makes it easier to sync and communicate. I can also share those bookmarks with other people. So the programmers on the floor could actually find the file and open it up and do what they need to do. So we'll hit save. And at this point, it's going to save the SOLIDWORKS file to the platform, and then it's going to kick off creating a copy of that file in the platform as well. 
Um, if I minimize this, we do have a, a object here that tells us when that is going to be converted. So if I come up here, once this turns to a green check mark, I know that I now have a copy that can be used or open directly inside of Delmia. So we'll go to our convert status here. So now we have the SOLIDWORKS file on the platform, but we also have the manufacturing copy and it's ready for me to open in Delmia. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump over to our Delmia and I'm going to go search my content. And you can see that here are the files that were just created. So I have a bookmark that syncs these together. So if I wanted to search on my bookmark tags, I could. And then you'll notice here's the SOLIDWORKS file as a CAD family. And then here's the synced copy we use for manufacturing. So I am just going to open this one up. And now I have my version I can start doing my manufacturing stuff on. Meanwhile, engineering can continue to do what they need to do. And if there's a revision change, then I'll see that pop up here. And then I have the ability to work with the revisions when I want to. So if I need to make a change down the road, I can just automatically load that revision. And you'll notice that the sketch geometry comes in. My coordinate systems come in. If I look at the tree, uh, everything else is here in the tree. So I have my G54, G55, and then my geometry geometrical set, I have the sketch geometry or the curve. So using the connector with SOLIDWORKS make, gives us more capability <laughs> um, for downstream use. And then we're always working on that synced copy. So we don't have to worry about overriding anything that engineering would do. So with this, we now just go through our, our regular process of uh, setting it up and programming, which takes us to our next step, which I want to build a little bit on what we talked about with um, with the previous lessons. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and we'll get this loaded in a, a PPR. So now we got this dropped in the PPR. You'll notice that, you know, it's laying flat in a position, but I, there's something I want to talk about here in just a second. We'll close that previous one just so we can keep the tree a little bit cleaner. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Mount and Import Resources, the same button that's here in the wizard. And we're going to load in a quick machine because I want to show you something about placement. Um, so we'll do a search. And we'll load in this machine again. And even your machines can have revisions. You'll see that we have A1 here. So I, if I had different revisions of the machines, I can have an A1, B1, C1, D1, um, whatever we need to be. So even your machines can have revisions, which then allow you greater capability over time. If you added like a fourth axis or other accessories, you can update them and then they get dropped in as well. So once we have our machine come in, you'll notice the machine also comes in with a, an end mill. In this instance, I already have tooling assigned to it. So like we did yesterday, what we're going to do is we're going to place this, but I want to show you a couple things that you can do here, which is actually sort of cool. Um, so I'm going to click on in my mountain import resources. I'm going to click on my part. And it's going to ask me to pick the coordinate system. And then I'm going to pick my workpiece and I'm going to drag this guy over. And then we'll double click. And there's our first version. Now let's say I want to machine the second side of this as well. So I can go to Mount Import Resources, click my product. It's going to ask where the setup needs to be. And I'll move this guy over. Now I said I wanted to machine the opposite side of one of these. Well, I can do that. 
So if we look at the setups for here, I can go to workpiece mount and you'll notice that I have coordinate system I can select. So if I come over here and I click this one and I can say that's the one I want to work with, it'll actually flip it to the opposite coordinate system. So if I zoom in here now, you'll notice that I have side one and side two. So if I use the coordinate systems on my part, I have the ability to flip those based on a workpiece mount here just by selecting the different coordinate systems that were applied. And then from there, I can also do setup one, setup two, and then in options, I can actually move that along X, Y, and Z. So before, when we are dragging these, you may have asked yourself, well, how do I know specifically where I want it to be from that mounting point? Well, once they're created and they're added to the machine, I can come over here, go to workpiece mount. And if I go to these options, you'll notice now I'm at 16 and X and along Y, let's say I want to do two, I'll hit apply you can now see that I'm specifically moving these those where I want them to be. And I can do the same with the first one. So here I'm 16, 2, and 0. And I'm 16, 2, and 0. And so right now I'm looking at the G55, Workforce 1. If I go to Setup 2, that flips me to this one. Now I'm at 9. We'll hit Apply. And in this one we want it to be 2. And then Z we're sitting right on the table. So very quickly and easily I can import different things, but you can see that by having the coordinate systems on there, it makes it easy for me to flip. So if I'm only machining one part at a time, I can still use this process and flip it or specifically place it. But in an area like this on a router where I may be making multiple parts, I can drop those multiple parts in tied to this setup and then just place them how I need to place them based off the coordinate system. So it makes it very flexible because if the design changes, then I have the option during the import to still use those coordinate systems and make sure everything aligns the way that I need them to. So the next thing we'll take a look at here, um, we'll save this quick. And we'll pop back to SolidWorks. And what we have right now is we have uh, A1 on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reserve this, which is similar to checkout. Some of you may may have done that before with uh, PDM systems. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this geometry. And let's say we make a design change. And in here, We'll move this over just a little bit. And on this side, we're going to make this circle a little bit bigger. And for some reason, we don't really know why, but we're going to create a hex on this side. So we have a few different design changes here. So we'll save that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save with options to check this in and we're going to create a new revision. Um, so we'll make that. We'll hit save. And now uh, we'll let the system take care of what it needs to. It's going to convert it to a B1 and then it's going to go through and create a, a new copy for us to leverage in manufacturing. So now we have our copy made. We're going to go back over here. And if you look, we have an NC assembly with this part in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this one up. And you'll notice that when we're looking at this, we have a default 8.1 here. So when you look at the files, you have the option for doing an update and there's an assistant for update where it'll tell you the difference between the new and the old. And in the update, you can actually, it'll color code what's different and what's not. So you get a graphical uh, interface. And then you also have the ability to replace by revisions, latest revision or existing. So if you had a specific file you wanted to 
replace with you can. So you're not stuck just always going forward. You have the ability to look forward or backwards with anything that fits this file. So I'm going to try replace by revision. You'll see that we have A1 and B1. So this is what I this is the latest one that came in. So what I want to do is I want to replace by that version. I'll hit OK. And we now have the updated geometry. You'll see that we have the circle and the hex. We have the geometry updated here. And if I go back to my machining area, you'll notice that those are now updated as well. So when you have revisions and you have updates, it's as simple as opening the manufacturing assembly. You'll see I have B1 here. Right click, replace. I can say I want to replace by a revision. And if I wanted to go back to A1, I can simply click on it. It'll go back to A1 with the geometry I have. If I save that. And then in my manufacturing cell, I'm now looking at machining A1. Now, the other thing that's important to understand about this too is as I'm doing this machining and I'm looking at A1 and B1, if I had tool paths associated with this, then I can just regenerate the tool paths and they automatically update, assuming the geometry is, you know, updatable, <laughs> right? So with that said, uh, that's sort of how revisions work. That's also how the, the SolidWorks connection works. And then just showing you how you can do two different sides of a part, throwing on a plate by using uh, the setup we have right here with our operations setup one, setup two. So that covers it for lesson eight. Thanks for tuning in.